And here we have our first Champions League finalists. Borussia Dortmund have done it. It was a David versus Goliath story. A club run on rules, passion and fandom versus a club with a bottomless pit of money. A club backed by fans versus a club backed by a nation state. And glorious it turned out to be. Borussia Dortmund have defied the odds and they have reached the Champions League final after 2012 for the first time. You know, back then it was Jurgen Klopp managing and they won back-to-back Bundesliga titles. That's how great an achievement it is. Most of us didn't even think Dortmund will go through the group stages. They had AC Milan, PSG and Newcastle in the wildest group of death that there ever has been in Champions League history. They not only beat them, they came out at top of that group and got PSV in, in the pre-quarters. Which in itself is not a mean feat because PSV are doing wonders. They are they won the Eredivisie, they were top uh, and they just lost once in the whole season. So beating them in the pre-quarters, then beating Atletico in the quarters and then beating PSG in the semi-finals. Nobody, nobody put their money on Borussia Dortmund but they have done it. And it's easy to forget. This is the team who until the last four minutes of last season were winning the Bundesliga title and then just folded. They just threw it away. It was in their hands but they lost it to uh, Bayern Munich. Eden Terzic, who is like a lifelong Borussia Dortmund fan, was left in tears after the end of the game because he was so disappointed by the team, by him, him, his own self, and just the pressure in which Borussia Dortmund crumbled. And he was almost apologetic to, to the fans. You know, even after such a superb season when they almost won it, they were left sad. But today has made up for all of those uh, errors and all of those missed chances. I think they did majority of their work in the first leg where they should have been 3-4 goals up. I know PSG did have chances, but Jaden Sancho was running a clinic on the right-hand side and he was, you know, back to his best, almost giving all the Manchester United fans, um, you know, uh, a little bit of the harsh reality of, you know, what they are dealing with in terms of their manager, player, club, ownership situation, but he completely left Kylian Mbappe in his shadows in this first leg and they went to Park de Prince with a one-goal lead. It's crazy to imagine that they had Matt Summers, who's 35 years old, the OG Borussia Dortmund guy, back in defence, and Schlotterback, who was amazing. He, uh, I think he, he, would, he would get a big move. I think he would get a big move to a big uh, league with champ- championship-winning pedigree team. And uh, this this performance just highlights the quality in in that player. They kept clean sheets in both the legs, both at home and away, to a PSG that had Ousmane Dembele, Kylian Mbappe, Gonzalo Ramos, a uh, plethora of players. There were like so many other players who failed to show anything for their quality and their credentials. The goal in today's leg, scored by Mats Hummels, just personifies Borussia Dortmund and the spirit and the will to win against odds because that guy has been all over Germany. I mean, he's, he's, he's only played in Germany, but like he's been to Bayern. He did not perform really well. He won a couple of Bundesligas with Borussia Dortmund back during Klopp's era. And then he came back. He was a, an essential part of the team last year uh, where they almost fell short at the final hurdle. And then this year, they are now in the finals. Marco Rui, the legend. I think he was he's one of those players who would definitely get a statue at the end of his career at Borussia Dortmund because he's been there, he's been the, uh, the, the, the constant that a club desires, that every club wants. Like a player who is good in quality, but he also spends his whole career without any uh, problems, without any issues with the club, even irrespective of whether they are winning or not. He's one of those guys. And he was left in tears. He basically said that... Uh, you know, he's he's feeling crazy about going to Wembley again, where they faced Bayern Munich the last time in, 20, in, in 2012. And, and and I hope and pray that, you know, they can do one better this time. Also, I want to say this, that I respect Sancho so much for not apologizing, because if he had, he would be on the bench today because Anthony would have played over him and he would have had like a 4-0 uh, scoreline slapped on him by Crystal Palace. Rather, he performed... He carried his team in the first leg. He performed very well in the second leg. And he took his team to the Champions League finals. Just the contrast. And, you know, this just goes to show that he might not have the mentality to play for Manchester United. I'm not saying that he's the only... Like, Eric Ten Hag is the only one at fault. But I just think that uh, this player has a lot of quality. And if given a platform to shine, I think he will do wonders. Ian Matson had a point to prove the this player who couldn't get any minutes at a very poor, struggling Chelsea. 
he had a point to prove to you know he played at the best of his abilities sapinson has a point to prove where he went to bayern he went to manchester united both of those clubs basically uh did not want to keep him and he came back to dortmund and now look look where he is are yemi like the left winger he is so rapid and so uh you know full of will and grit and up for the fight love to see it and julian brand He's been on the German scene for a long, long time, never at the center of it. And now there are other players like Florian Wirtz and Musiala coming up and, you know, again, keeping him on the on the backstage. But he showed his class in both the legs. And I really, really hope this team can continue and uh, perform in the final and just clinch the trophy. Whatever good Dortmund did, equally bad were PSG. The XG stats were 3.53 for PSG versus 0.88 for Borussia Dortmund. But a lot of people are talking about like, you know, PSG didn't play poorly. I think, in my opinion, they played really bad. All of that uh, XG was accumulated after Borussia went 2-0 up in the tie. So Borussia literally had to just sit back, defend, and defend they did. They had monsters at the back, tall, lanky lads who were basically intercepting, heading each and every ball away. And the only route that PSG had were their PC players in Hakimi, uh, Mbappe and Usman Dembele, all three of them had a poor game. They were extremely selfish. They were relying on moments. And every time I saw them have the ball, they always tried to just shoot. And that is not how teams should set up. That is not how you should play a big match. It's a team game. It's not an individual sport. PSG signed Ugarte, Kolumwani and Skriniar. And none of them were available. Uh, for this match, for any of those legs, actually. And we need to have a serious conversation about Kylian Mbappe. He is the best player in the world, for me, he is. But will he ever reach the level of Messi and Ronaldo? He's 26 next year. He hasn't won a single Champions League. He definitely carried France to two World Cup finals, having won one of them. But on the club level, due to political reason, due to personal reason, due to whatever the motivation be behind staying in PSG, he hasn't achieved anything. He's won he's won French titles, but we all know how much those matter in the grand scheme of things. Over the period of two legs, he had zero goals, zero assists, a combine of four shots on target, and he lost the ball 34 times over 180 minutes. 34 times he lost possession. That's a lot for supposedly the best player in the world. And it just goes to show the overall uh, setup of PSG as a club. They have employed managers that have won 11 European trophies, including six Champions League titles. They've tried to get best players all the time. And yet 13 years later, after Qatar buying PSG, they still haven't won a And I really fear for Mbappe right now because PSG Ultras are one of the uh, harshest critics of their own team, and rightly so. The only one player that I would like to highlight in PSG was Vitina. And I think that is a star in the making. I think he needs to, uh, I don't know, like the uh, Portuguese team is overloaded with amazing talent. But I think he has that uh, Bernardo Silva's touch uh, and, and game to him. And I think uh, if not a starter, he definitely deserves to be, you know, amongst the first, second substitutes in, in that Portuguese team. I think he deserves to be the starter as well. And lastly, German League. How beautifully have they come back on the European scene? We have one finalist in Borussia Dortmund. We might have another in Bayern Munich. And then there is this mean feat of Xabi Alonso just going in a season unbeaten, going for a treble. It's it's the stuff of dreams. It's the stuff of dreams, uh, all of these three teams. But it's how you announce yourself on the European stage. And if Bayern Munich beat Real Madrid tomorrow, then we need to have a serious conversation about EPL and La Liga, obviously, but like EPL specifically being the best league in the world, whether it is best league in the world or it's not. I don't think anymore. I mean, when you have a team going unbeaten in three competitions, basically uh, putting aside, wiping the floor with any team that they face, another one that schooled uh, Arsenal in their quarters. And if they do progress, they would have beaten Real Madrid, the perennial uh, European giants. And Borussia Dortmund, who basically were nowhere in the picture until very recently, until the last stages of Champions League. And then look at them now. They're in the Champions League final. I really hope, I really pray that they win the Champions League. I think they've had a lot of heartbreaks in in, in the past 10-15 years with Champions League finals, Bundesliga titles. I really do believe that if Bayern Munich beat Real Madrid and it's Borussia versus Bayern, then there's going to be like this psychological block. Uh... 
but football is a funny game and I know they deserve to win and I hope that they win.